Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Redeemed Marriage Podcast. This is Rusty and Heather Bryant. And we are in the middle of... Summer shorts, do 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 do. Summer you know, shorts, do 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 do. You know what's so do, funny summer is summer shorts, do, was, do 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 do. Summer shorts. You're not gonna stop, are you? <laughs> Somebody at church this morning did that to me, and I was like, yes. <laughs> well, maybe it, it has caught on. It, Sometimes when I hear cheesy stuff on podcasts, I'm like, oh, I'm no. not listening. To oh, this. sorry. Please don't <laughs> cut it off on my account. <laughs> Just humor her, yes. and uh, she will be. And Very I, happy. It's just like your dumb hello, folks. People come become accustomed to hearing it. So our campus pastor, he does this thing when he finishes. Mm-hmm. Um, when he tells everybody bye for the day, he goes, peace. Peace. And like he didn't know it had become a thing because he didn't do it one Sunday. And, and he said everybody was like, you didn't say peace. It didn't feel so complete. And so I think we just do things sometimes. I see my guitar sitting right over there. Maybe we could <laughs> come, up with, come up with a little a, a summer jingle. shorts jingle. But I think that once summer shorts are over, there's going to be some people who are like, we miss baby shark. Is, is that what you think? <laughs> Wait, we heard some, somebody told us that we uh, comment said that we set off baby shark oh, on, on their Siri on their, or something yeah on yeah. like Alexa or mm-hmm. something anyway mm-hmm. yeah. yeah I remember I mean, reading does that reading sound that. I would sound just like because they said you obviously don't have little children <laughs> all right <laughs> we, we don't. don't we don't <laughs> we're reliving yep. the childhood by singing right. the the shark song that's right all right, so summer shorts. Some of you are like, what in the world are these people mm-hmm. talking about? Because we do get new listeners every week. So this is a marriage podcast. It's not a baby shark, uh, little kids podcast. But uh, it's a marriage podcast. And Heather and I went through a marriage crisis that we sometimes call it and label it as that. Um, 2011, so it's been almost 13 years. It'll be 13 years this summer. And we journeyed through infidelity. And so on the other side of that, we are blessed to be able to share our story of hope with other couples and be able to do marriage coaching and retreats and all kinds of wonderful things that God has just allowed us to use our mess as his message, which is pretty incredible. So We want you to uh, join in and listen, not just if you are attracted to our story of betrayal, uh, but also just because we learned so much about marriage and God's design for marriage and how incredible marriage can be, whether you've been through a disastrous situation or not. So there you go. We don't have the little, you know, some people read off what their podcast is about and why you should listen to it, and we don't do that. So every now and then I'm like, we should probably tell people what this is about. So I just did. There it is. That's what it's about. (laughs) But we're in the middle. you would know that because you listen to podcasts. I do listen to podcasts. I listen to our podcast. You told me that you listened to our podcast the other day, and you were like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I said that. It was like that had to have been God. Oh, it was 100% God. I was like, ooh, where did that come from? (laughs) Man, this podcast is good. (laughs) should listen to this more often. I also heard some things that I shouldn't do, and but I'm not going to tell people because then then they'll they'll only hear it. That's right. Don't do that. All right. Summer shorts. We are in the middle of summer shorts. To briefly explain what that is, we are taking your questions. We are still taking questions. Mm -hmm. So we have tons of questions, but we still want you throughout the whole summer. I mean, like summer has just started. Yeah. So we're still going to do do our last one at the end of July. Yeah. We still got a couple of months Mm -hmm. of this. So get your questions in. Any question that you want to ask us, you submit it. Go to our website, theredeemedmarriage.com. And there's a banner at the top that makes makes it easily accessible, but also click on the contact drop down menu. What are you doing with your glasses over there? I'm trying to put them on so I can read our question. Okay. Um, The ask, you can just drop down the contact uh, from from the menu bar, contact. Click on it, drops down, you see ask. Click on that. 
ask us a question, you will be entered into a drawing. If we answer your question on our podcast, like we're about to do, then we're going to send you some swag. We've already sent out three weeks' worth of swag that have been sent to some listeners. And then the great thing is the uh, grand prize at the end of the summer, we will be selecting from all submissions, not just the ones that were chosen to Mm -hmm. be discussed and answered on air, all submissions. We're going to draw. If we pick you, we are going to come and visit you. We're going to crash your town. Mm Mm-hmm. We're just gonna actually. We're just gonna we're come just gonna go, on, go, go, come, go, go on a double date with you because uh, we love our listeners and this is gonna be super fun. All right, now let's get into it. Summer shorts. We're six minutes into the shortness. <laughs> and I haven't read the question. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Last week it was not short. Yeah, it was not. Okay, I really should have done summer shorts to banjo music because this banjo question music comes from Kentucky. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bluegrass. I was like, what? Yeah, and I can say that because I was born in Kentucky. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. I was right. born there in yeah. Glasgow. You were but born this in- is not from Glasgow, Kentucky. What's the city? It doesn't matter. Remember, you said, oh. let's not say the city. Okay. Somebody might not want their city okay. told. <laughs> Kentucky. It's from <laughs> Kentucky. Now, I will say this one was a long, like they gave us some history and like it was, I can't just read this yeah. little yeah, bitty but it question. Was great. It, it was great. a great question. But what I'm saying is I, I might understand. stumble a little bit in my question. I mean, in my reading of it, because it kind of jumps around a little bit. So, but you're just condensing this. I'm condensing it exactly. Gotcha. So basically, um, it's saying that recently they had a weekend where they both seem to have attitudes with each other. No, and, <laughs> people and, do that, <laughs> and nitpicked with major attitudes over Ooh, major mm-hmm, attitude <laughs> over the weekend, and it was relentless and brutal. Mm, hey, we feel you. Yes. We hear you. And then the twofold question that comes from that is, how do you stop once you are both in a in that spiral fighting and nitpicking with attitude space? And should you and when should you say that you're sorry? Mm, that's good. So a question basically about fighting, about disagreements. Yes. Uh, so let me throw this first out there. Ready? Man, this is a good question. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. I, like, here's the thing. Did, did everybody hear that? <laughs> da dong. Y'all, if you're not watching on YouTube, she was delicately placing her glasses <laughs> <laughs> on the table <laughs> and being so I quiet. Just fell out of the chair, too. Gosh. People are like, we got to go watch this on YouTube now. <laughs> That's right. I hit the microphone. That's my fault. All right. Sorry. Um, first, the first thing I want to say is, if you're following along reading with us in our mm-hmm. monthly marriage, or our, what do we call that? The reading challenge. Yes. The 2024 reading challenge, where we have chosen a book every month to read. This month, we are reading Craig Groeschel's book. Um, from this day forward. From this day forward. And there's a chapter in there about fighting fair. Yes, have I have not got- gotten to it yet. Okay. Uh, about how to fight fair. Did and I tell you last week that I'm listening to yes, that book? I really love it. Mm-hmm. Okay, continue. So, how to fight fair. So, if you're reading along with us, then go go listen. Or Have you read that chapter? I've read the book. Oh, well, maybe you should just lead this discussion. No, because this is our answer <laughs> okay. to this question. Okay. This is not Craig... Craig and Amy oh, Groeschel's okay. answer to Although the I'm sure they are brilliant about this. Well, way better than probably us. But yeah. we're gonna but <laughs> we'll they did, but nobody asked them this question. <laughs> That's right. They asked us. They may have asked them, but who knows? All right. So let's talk about so, for uh, us. Let's just be real up front and say that we fight. Well, I was gonna say okay, because I was gonna contradict that. We do yes, we do fight. But we, we're actually really yeah. good at this. Yes. Well, and I was going to say... We, we weren't. Exactly. We were we terrible. We were terrible fighters um, pre-adultery. Yes. Mm-hmm. But when we restructured our marriage mm-hmm. and rebuilt it, I mean, yeah. how God designed us to walk together, then we have gotten a lot better. 
but we still have issues. Like, I don't want people to think, I, when I say we fight, I don't want people to think that we just skip through meadows all day and that we don't. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a great, I have never, I don't even think I've ever heard that before, but that was awesome. We skip through meadows. <laughs> And Do you have stop a... and make love there. You... <laughs> I'm going to hit pause. <laughs> that got me a little excited. Um, I'm just saying, I like, know. like I, we no. have issues. I yes. mean, we have communication problems. We have disagreements. Yes. We, but we have learned to handle them in a yes. way. I that's think. Better. I think the reason why I jumped in there is because when when this question first came up, I thought I thought well. We learn so many tools. So the fighting and the, I, I mean, did that have something to do with the adultery? Not really. But what we did was we learned in that all of these tools to make our marriage completely new and different. And this, I think, was one of those things that we just completely changed. Yeah, completely And changed. so that's why I feel like this is something we can speak into pretty well because we do this very, I mean, we, we, when we have arguments, disagreements, fights, whatever you want to call it, um, we do it well Yeah, for and the most part. You know, I'm thinking about people who I'm just, nutrition comes to my mind, who didn't eat well for years and years and years and years, and then they master the art of eating healthy and uh, like, it's just like that. We can speak to how not mm, to do it yeah. and we can speak how to do it better. Yeah. And so, um, and that doesn't mean that we're perfect, right? but in that area, but we definitely have learned a lot. So I think the question centered around when, uh, how do you get out of that cycle of nitpicking yeah, yeah. and anger? Because once you start, oh, it's yeah. hard to get out. It is hard, you know, because it can start as something really small, and it's just like a jab. Mm -hmm. There's some sort of jab. There's a word or words that come out that strike a nerve, mm -hmm. and then it's like, well, I gotta, I gotta get mine in too, and then it's like, here you oh, go, mm -hmm. and then, then it just is this repeated yep. and it's an endless cycle. So. I would say that the first half of our married life, we've been married, it would be 28 mm -hmm. years this summer. Mm -hmm. The first half of our married life was uh, because the infidelity happened at year 15. We, we got in this a lot. The way we got out of it was extremely unhealthy. At, yeah. um, when we would start fighting and arguing, it... Well, you can you can tell what what would normally happen in an argument. Sure. Well, yeah, I never lost an argument. Right. Ever, I plowed my way through. Even if you came to me out of or said something that was one hundred percent my fault that I needed to acknowledge or I needed to take responsibility for, or if I needed to apologize for, none of those things ever happened. I always managed to either beat you down so much that you just quit arguing about it, or I turned it in, and twisted it in such a way that I made it your fault, and then you ended up apologizing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you would say you were sorry just to get out oh, of it. Oh, 100%. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say a lot of the times. I would say yeah. almost 100%. Like, I'm sorry. I mean, the first 15 years of our marriage, it was like the little joke that you hear where you just, you know, the husband wakes up in the morning and just says, I'm sorry. For what? Well, for everything I'm going to do wrong today. And mm -hmm. that's how... Because I, I know it's coming. Yeah. Because yeah. that's how I would... That's how I felt. And so even... I, first of all, you were not a safe place to communicate mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. But when it did reach that point, and sometimes it would reach that point because of something that you would say to... You would bring to me some sort of a jab or something unrealistic. And I just was trying to defend myself because I was poor at communicating. And so I would come back at you, and then it just got to a point where I would just finally say, okay, you're right, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. done. And that was the, the whole point of it was I just wanted to be done. Right. And there was, to be and honest. With no resolution. Mm, and, there was, and there was no 
I actually probably even no reason for an apology other than to end to right. end the conversation. So one of the parts of that question was, is it ever okay to just say you're sorry? Well, yeah, it is because sometimes there's a legitimate reason and you just need to say that you're sorry. But most of the time, people say that they're sorry in those type arguments just because they want it to be over. Right. And that's not very healthy. So no. we got to give some some ways that you can do that differently. But there was a first part of the question, too. The first part of the question was... The first part was how do you, how do you get out of that cycle? Of yes. And then the second part to the question was... Is there a time to apologize? Like, should you always apologize? I think part of it was, should I wait until the next day to apologize? Yeah. It was just kind of circled around the So I'm about apology. to give some, some just groundbreaking, earth-shattering news that goes along with this. The best way to get out of that is to not ever get in it. In the crazy cycle? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> earth-shattering. Groundbra- groundbreaking? How yeah. did you... Groundbreaking, ground earth shattering. shattering, ground shattering, <laughs> ground shattering. I just shattered some ground. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I, that is a joke in some ways. But it's also very, very real. Well, if you don't, you know, if if the problem the problem becomes when both of you are not in a position to be level headed enough to stop what's happening. Or, let me say an or in that. Okay, you're not. I was going to say mature, but that's not the, I was going to say mature enough, but not able to identify that you're headed in that direction. Well, I think you're right. There are some couples that they get in the cycle because, because one or both is not mature. Right. I mean, that's just the reality of it, but it can also happen to two, co- to two sure. people that are very mature Sure. because we're just humans. Yeah. And so either way, in those situations, there has to be a point where someone reaches a level-headedness where they're able to say, we got to stop this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that, you know, if I think about the times that this maybe has started to flare up with us, and I'm going to be honest, I don't really remember a, a recent time. Um, but I think that when those things have flared up over the last 15 years, over the last 13 years, I will say it that way, when those things have flared up, one or both of us have been smart enough to just go, hey, we, we, need, we need to stop before we really, mm-hmm. one of us really hurts the mm-hmm. other one. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's painful stopping, especially when one person is not in that, mature space right then they just want to keep going like it's just fuel to the fire it's throwing gasoline on it and it's just stirring it all up and then when one says hey we need to stop this i get it like that person's like no we ain't stopping Mm -hmm. like let's throw down right here Mm -hmm. right now Mm -hmm. but the damage that that causes and you don't you don't realize it but i mean words are so they just cut so deep And somebody has to get to a point where they're just able to say, we need to stop this until we can discuss this in a more calm and and control control way. We've had some people, I mean, we've had a, we had a couple recently that we were doing marriage coaching with and he just walked out of the room Mm -hmm. and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, and when they told us the whole story, I think it was the best thing he could have done at that time. And I think that sometimes, though, doing that with a bit of an explanation, mm-hmm. even and the explanation of "Hey, I'm I don't choose to walk. I'm going to choose to walk mm-hmm. away because I'm not confident in what's about to come out of my mouth mm-hmm. if I stay in here and stay engaged in this conversation. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to I'm going to choose to walk away right now because I I I don't want to hurt mm-hmm. you or me mm-hmm. in this situation. And that doesn't mean we're not going to revisit it. Right. It just means right now it's not healthy for me to talk about. Yeah. And I like I was listening to you say, I can't remember the last time that we had but I because that's my default, I mean, like I still battle that a lot where I just control 
I just have more control over my tongue than oh, I did. I know. I know you battle that. Yeah. But yeah. you're... Yes, because you're right. That is not who you were before. You still have... You're looking over there to make yeah, sure. Yeah, I know. it went off, so it, I just make sure. It's good. Okay, it's okay, good. okay. We're technical. Technical things. We're good. And she's trying to take care of the technical things. <laughs> Isn't that fun? But I hadn't pushed any buttons. No, thank you. <laughs> no, but I know, like I can see when it's about to flare up in you. But you are really, really good at recognizing that now. Where in the past it would have been just, like, just no filter. Mm-hmm. We're we're doing this. Yeah. And so so this goes back to a little bit of if those things I, I want people to understand these type of things they happen in all marriages. I yeah. say all marriages. We did have a question. <laughs> we need to answer it at uh-huh. some point because somebody asked a question and said, We don't ever fight. Is, Is that there okay? S- something wrong with that? <laughs> And there's probably some things we can dig into there. But for the majority, and I would almost say almost every marriage, there are these things that flare up. And so that doesn't mean that something's wrong with you, that your marriage is not good, that it's not healthy or whatever. But there's also, like for us... We're growing in our own maturity and our own help, you know, making our marriage healthy where we just are able to recognize it really fast. Yeah. You know, one thing that I wanted to say is I think that there are times when little things flare up on unexpected things that you fight about. And, you know, it's something that comes out of the blue and you're like, oh, you know, here this goes, or how do we handle this? And it's, and it, you have to really, really think about how to handle it in the moment. But then there are also things that you know you're going to fight about. I mean, there are hot spots like um, money, like sex, like it, where you're like, anytime we talk about this, it ends up in a fight. Well, those things I think need to be approached differently Mm. because you know that they're triggers you know that they're hard for you to communicate about I mean for us one of those things is money I mean it's hard when we talk about money I get really anxious because I'm like because I feel like oh this could go south Mm. very quickly and so being prepared for that conversation and knowing that that's a trigger spot um, I think that I am able to come in a little bit more cautious. And we have things that we put into place, heart talks we've talked about um, in the past, or just ways to communicate better around things that we know mm-hmm. are fighting areas for us. But then there's those things that just come up, like the little things that they're talking about, where it's not, you didn't really even know you needed to have a heart talk mm-hmm. because it just was somebody, you know, copped yeah. an attitude with you yeah. or whatever and what <laughs> what is it cocked an attitude i think i said copped that would be like copped a squat right <laughs> man <laughs> cock an attitude i don't know whatever the saying is um you know just it was quick and it, and you weren't really expecting it and didn't have time to prepare for it So I just think that those are two different things. But I also think that you don't avoid those hard things just because because I do think that there's people that are like, well, we know how this is going to end every time, so we're just never going to talk talk about Mm -hmm. it. And that is not healthy either. Nope. Um, but the, you know, some, one of the things that, that they asked in the question was, what do you, you, you know, do you wait and apologize in the morning or do you apologize mm-hmm. the next morning or whatever? And those are great things. I mean, we talk about, if you can go onto our website and search heart talk, um, in the search bar of, we have a place where you're on our website podcast page you can search for certain topics Mm -hmm. if you'll search for heart talk you'll get to hear us talk a little bit about this incredible communication tool that we learned and we we share this a lot with lots i mean every coaching couple that we work with Mm -hmm. but you can hear a little bit about it not as much detail as what we would go through in a coaching session but one of the things that we teach in there is that when you're in the midst of 
of an argument of some sort and even like a heart talk if you, if you say i'm sorry just to get out of it then it doesn't mean it really doesn't mean anything mm-hmm. now i will say that just in everyday life there are times that things happen your spouse brings it up to you and immediately you're just like oh my goodness i'm you know i'm sorry i i didn't mean to do that or mm-hmm. where that's that's fine we know that's just a part of life but these these things that seem to spiral out of control when you say that you're sorry it doesn't even mean mean as much to the person that you're apologizing to because they know well you're just saying that just to right. get, just to be done with this and so what happens is to answer this part of the question when you come back later or the next day or i mean you know it could be just an hour later and you've thought about it like that apology means so much more like it has so much more depth to it and meaning because you've actually thought Mm -hmm. and you've thought about the situation you've thought what your role was you you understand that there's a need to say that you're sorry yes there yes come back to it if if there needs to be an apology for sure saying you're sorry is okay right it's a it's a good thing well, and, and it's, it's a healthy good, thing. And what's even healthier is putting words to what you're sorry for. Mm-hmm. Like I'm sorry that I hurt you in that way. I'm sorry that I made you feel that way. You know, I'm sorry I let you down. It's 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 putting words to what you're sorry for. And when you've had time to think about it, you can you can do that. But if not, you're just saying sorry. Hey, so We've talked about this for quite a while now. It's not summer shorts. We, can we just change the name of this? No. It's not. <laughs> no. It's because then you'd have to change your, yeah, change your and song. When, one of our questions says, one of the questions that I really want to do says, what would you tell somebody in five minutes? Well, that's really going to be a summer short if we There's only no have... chance in the world we can <laughs> tell anybody anything in five minutes. Here's what I wanted to do real quick, though, as we close. I started thinking just about arguments and and spiraling how they spiral out of control and stuff maybe just real quick really short this is the summer shorts part of it real quick we just give what are the danger spots like when you see this happening in an argument that's when you need to be real careful such as i mean obviously you know and i don't think that anybody's thinking like this but physical Mm -hmm. if something gets physical in any way then something's not right in you and your heart and in your marriage. Mm-hmm. There should never be any type of physical confrontation when you're in an argument. That's, I mean, that's just called losing control. Yes. If you're losing control right. physically, emotionally, yes, it has to stop. Mm-hmm. If there are children mm-hmm. present mm-hmm. and you are yelling and throwing things in a way that, Mm-hmm. your children can overhear. Well, I was just going to even say, you know, the raising of, your, if mm-hmm. your voice starts raising right. and you start getting angry. I mean, Name calling. Name calling. Yes. If you're, if you're, and if you're digging, you know, and you're bringing up the past stuff, stuff that doesn't have anything to do with the conversation, mm-hmm. like those need to be immediate checks to where you're like, this is spiraling out of control. Yep. There is a there is a time and a place to have to fight fair, you know, to have a conversation and a disagreement, even an argument, you could call it. But if it starts escalating to where you're you're yelling, you're saying language that you shouldn't, you're calling names, you're bringing up the past, it's getting physical. Are there other things that 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 you can think of? I just wanted to because I wanted people to be able to go. All right, well. Where do I know? When do I know that I got to get out of that We've mm. got to get out of this and we've got to stop it. I mean, have a code of some sort. I mean, like, you know, just a timeout, like give yep. the timeout signal. Mm. And when you're thinking, if you're not even listening to your spouse because you're thinking of what you're going to say next mm-hmm. and come back with, you're not in a sweet place to That's listen. Right. That's right. And so if you're if you're just staring at them, thinking about how you're going to slam them that next, great. that's a great. Then point. just stop because yep. you're not listening. I Neither would e- one of you. Are. I would even go so far as to say, have a conversation when you're when you're calm, like when there's no mm-hmm. 
there's no argument, there's nothing that you're arguing arguing about, but maybe you have had one of these in the last couple of days and everything's fine, you've smoothed it over, and maybe you come together and you talk and you go, look, well, I, this is not healthy for us. We don't need to get to that point. And at that point, both of you probably recognize it and realize it, and you say to each other, all right, if we get in this situation, what can we do? Is there some sort of signal? Is there something that one of us, even in the heat of the moment, can say or do and it brings us back to this very conversation where we're both in agreement that it's okay to do that. Like to say, let's, let's walk away. Let's have a timeout. You know, whatever your code word might be. But I think that if you discuss that beforehand, mm-hmm. then if one of you is, is in the right headspace to be able to throw that out, then both of you can come back to the conversation that you've had where you both agreed and you can say, yes, you're right. That's right. Because otherwise, if you never talk about this and you're in the middle of it and one of you throws up the timeout mm-hmm. signal, I'm gonna throw then that time that's out like, up your honey. are you serious? Right. You know, mm-hmm. don't be, but yeah. All right. So I don't like the timeout signal. <laughs> I don't either. I'm just, <laughs> some people may love it. I, I don't. Well, just gave her the timeout <laughs> signal, okay? <laughs> All right. Um, I'm done. I'm done. Summer shorts. Oh, we're sorry, guys. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. It's thir- we're 32 minutes. That's so long for a summer short. It's fine. We love you People guys. People are going to be like... Not only do they talk about how long their episodes are all the time and sing these little jingles <laughs> about the time length of their mm-hmm. yeah we'll do better we'll do better we'll do better next time no but hey if you if you put to- but here's the thing if they turn on our podcast they know how many minutes it is it shows up on there oh okay and if they're like they're here for it if they're like i don't want to listen to 31 minutes of this then you know what they won't it's 32 <laughs> let's see if we can make it no. to 32. Tell them all goodbye. right we love you guys and we'll see you next time bye-bye